Welcome back. We've been working through problem 24A in part one. We prepared a lot of journal entries based on the transactions above. In part two, we moved those journal entries and opened new T accounts for them. We posted from journal entries to T accounts. The final part, that's this part, we're going to prepare a trial balance. Now you'll recall a trial balance is a list of all of our accounts. And it's important to list them in the following order. We'll go assets, then liabilities, then equity accounts, then revenues and expenses and, and dividends if we have them. Uh, but we'll start with our assets. Now, the good thing about the trial balance from a student perspective is it doesn't have these complicated subtotals, income before tax or total current assets. You just list everything and say whether it's a debit or credit. And the idea is in the old times when you'd move journal entries to T accounts over to the trial balance, people would make mistakes. And so the trial was you're trying it out, balance to see if it's going to balance. These days, it's just nice to have all the accounts on one sheet, but it's, it harkens back to the old days of accounting where you literally were like, does this still balance? I'm not sure. Now a computer can tell us in two seconds if it's balanced. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and prepare it. We'll start with a three line title, name of our company, teacher's pet, tutoring service, Name of the statement we're being asked to make. This is a trial balance. And trial balances are just dated and they're dated the month and date or the whatever, you know, the last date <laughs> relevant is. And this is April 30th. And if you need a year in our workbook, everything's going to be 2029 in this workbook. Okay. So remember with a trial balance, there's just two headings. One, DR for debit accounts, and two, CR for accounts that ended in a credit. We just work our way down the list. So we've got cash, 15300 debit, of course, AR, $2,000 debit. I'm going to try to make these all fit in my grid. There's a reason I have graph paper. I should use it. Supplies, $6,000 debit. Uh, notes receivable would come next. We want to be in balance sheet order. Now I note that the notes are zero. I note the notes are zero. Um, they would typically, you would find zero balances on trial balances, maybe not in financial statements, but in trial balances, because it just indicates the account is in use. Uh, and certainly this account was used this month. Computers, 23500 We will spend quite a bit of time next chapter talking about why net is uh, attached to that. Uh, accounts payable. Now, everything so far has been a debit. Here's our first credit. Accounts payable is a credit of 1000 We expect assets to be debits. We expect the liabilities and equity accounts to be credits, generally speaking. Our bank loan payable is a credit of 13,500. We got common shares and retained earnings. Common shares are 50. Retained earnings. twenty five six fifty. And now on to revenues and expenses. Tutoring rev, we're still in the credits here. Tutoring rev, uh, 18,000 credit. And then we got a bunch of expenses. Advertising expense, 3,000 debit. Utilities expense. Two fifty debit, salaries expense eight thousand debit, and telephone expense one fifty debit. So summing these all up, we'll see if our trial balance is in balance. Let me move this to a fresh part of the page just to give us a little real estate to work with. There we go. That looks beautiful. Um, okay, so we just need totals. 
right? We want to make sure our total debits equals our total credits. That'll mean our financial statements will be in balance when we at last prepare them. It also means we didn't make any errors uh, in transferring the accounts. We might have screwed up a journal entry. We didn't, but you know, you might have. You could still balance if you screwed up a journal entry, but uh, it's a good error catching mechanism. Let's add them up. 15,300 plus 2,000 plus 6,000 plus 23,500 plus 3 plus 250 plus 8,000 plus 150. I get 58,200 on the debit side of the ledger. On the credit side, it's 1,000 plus 13,500 plus 50 plus 25,650 plus 18,000. I get 58,200 on the credit side of the ledger, a very good sign. My trial balance is in balance. I double underline both the bottom lines. I put dollar signs at the top of each column. I put dollar signs beside anything that's double underlined. And there I have it, a beautiful trial balance. You wouldn't provide this to shareholders of a company, but insiders of the company do look at the trial balance all the time. It's a useful document to know what it is and to know how to prepare it. And I hope you know how to prepare it now. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video and hit me with one of those thumbs or subs if you liked it. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Goodbye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.